Hey, it's Fort Worth Playboy. <laughs> My Playboy's ready. <laughs> and welcome to our podcast where we discuss game, pickup, relationships, and sex, sex, sex. And today will be a little bit off topic. We're going to talk about five things that you probably don't know about My Playboy's Bunny. <laughs> or Bunny from this point forward. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so we will, we will be delving into this five things. <laughs> They're so stupid. So number one, you competed in bodybuilding. Yeah. I was a very lightweight. I was the lowest weight class. I always like to point this out. Competitive bodybuilding. And I got second in the state in Arkansas. That's, which is where we lived at the time. And how old were you? Um, it was 2006 when I stopped competing. So I guess I was 28 when I stopped competing. Because it was right before I had had the third child. Right. So you had two already that were young. Yeah. In school, at least. Yeah. And your husband at the time. Yes. He ran the gym. Yes. This is a very common theme in your life. Exactly. Yeah. I I, oh, I have a type. They I'm like, you had me at you own a gym. <laughs> yeah. So my ex-husband is also in fitness. He's an exercise physiologist. What did you learn from getting ready for a competition? You know, in the one or two year two years really, because you you spent a year just. Oh yeah. Sides. No, you yeah. you I spent because before then, I mean, before then. Most recently, I was primarily just doing a lot of distance running and lightweight weight training. So it wasn't, it wasn't, I was not in any condition to be on a bodybuilding yeah. stage. It was a totally different, but I always admired it. So what did so, you learn during that journey? So it took me two years of bulking and putting on muscle and being okay with, bulking and all that entails eating until you're absolutely sick of eating. I mean, it, it becomes, it becomes as much a job as anything is just, the, that's what shocked me. I would say the most, cause I, you know, my husband at the time, my ex-husband warned, he sat me down when I said I wanted to do this. He did. He sat me down. He said, you need to understand you're not going to like your body through bulking pay, phase. It's just, you're, you're going to gain weight. You can't help but gain fat whenever you put on the kind of muscle that you need to put on in order to then cut and still have muscle. So he, he mentally prepared me really well for it. Um, but then he also let me know, you are going to get sick of eating. But honestly, even though he said that, I thought, you know what? I'm a girl, though. So we're I'm not going to eat as much, you know... You get so tired of eating. I mean, it just, you think, if I have to eat one more chicken breast or one more snack bag in the middle of this thing because it's been an hour since I ate and I'm starving to death, yeah. It was awesome. I loved it. You're the mom of three. I am the mom of three. And you started early. Well, I didn't start in high school or anything. I no. was married. I always like to point that out, too. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, I, um, so I had my first child when I was 20 years old, right before I turned 21, uh, literally the month before I had my second at 21, I guess, 20, I guess, I guess I just turned 22. I guess I just turned 22. Uh, cause they're very close, but, but they're kind of two years apart. And then my third when I, right before I turned 30, so, yeah. And you were literally a stay-at-home mom at 2021. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was essentially a stay-at-home mom my entire motherhooding career. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to do a lot of that. Now, I mean, I still was a personal trainer, but that was a lot more like around my mom's schedule. Like, the kids didn't really even know. have to miss me. Exactly. Very interesting. Yeah. It was very cool. Number three, last year you <laughs> ate approximately, maybe more, 180 pizzas oh my God. in one year. I did. I did. We I did, ate 180 medium pepperoni pizzas 
from Domino's last year. In 2022, I ate approximately 180 pizzas. But in def- in my defense, I have to tell the story. If you're going to tattle on me, I have to tell the story of how this started. So my 180 pizzas began because you and I were having stay-at-home date nights. And we were watching a movie and we were drinking alcohol and we were ordering pizzas. And then it was awesome. And it was awesome. Like we would order three pizzas because I always order three because that was like the minimum amount to not have like delivery fee or whatever the deal was. <laughs> whatever, whatever my rationale was. But it was always three. It's pepperoni because that's your favorite, not mine, but now it's mine. Now that's all I eat. And so we were like ordering these three medium pizzas. We were watching a movie. We were getting drunk on whiskey and having the (laughs) the best nights at home. It was great in our pajamas and then fucking like porn stars. It was amazing. And then slowly, Fort Worth just kind of stopped eating the pizza with me. <laughs> but I kept and ordering were, them. And that sounds, that's my normal thing is that I like, will <laughs> do a cheap meal or a cheap food for a while. Yeah. And then I'll just taper off of it and then not. And you think nothing of it. That's what's amazing about you is you can actually turn off cravings. And I'm yeah. like, how in the hell did you just do that? Yeah. So anyway, but I was in the habit of ordering three pizzas a weekend. So I got to where by the end of, well, by probably March, not even the end of, I would say I was eating a pizza on Friday, a pizza on Saturday, and a pizza on Sunday. That was crazy. Towards the end of the year, in all fairness to me, thank you, Domino's. I love your pizza. It's a great recipe. But in the by the end, I was starting to feel so gross that I switched to like more of like a locally made, you know, like yeah, organic. A little, it wasn't organic. It wasn't healthy, but it was like a local, like real ingredient yeah, kind of big difference feel. Yeah, big difference. I would order one, and I would like kind of spend the whole weekend eating it. But it was a it was. It was a lot more satisfying. That's I didn't so have to eat an entire pizza to get full. Yeah, yeah. There's exactly. a lot to it. But yes, I I estimate that I ate, that I actually ate 180 medium pepperoni pizzas from Domino's last year. And you spent how year. much money last year on pizza? On I, I would estimate about $4,000. Without tips. That's hilarious. <laughs> I would estimate. I did the math. We don't. I, we don't recommend this at home. <laughs> no, we don't. I should. I should be as as she wide should, she has as I am freakish, tall. Freakishly good genetics. The first time I ever saw her eat a pizza, she like got up in the morning and she had like a four pack. I did. It actually I had made her leaner. Completely leader. ripped abs. Yeah, it's like those guys that drink and they get more robust and they feel better in the morning. Yeah. The hangover. She does the same thing. That's with me. Food. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. <laughs> Number four. Oh shit. You have always, in some manner, exercised. Always. my I started with ballet at two years old. I did ballet for 20 years. I was a sprinter and um, and a field events girl. My my forte was the triple jump, which is kind of ironic. That's crazy. Because I'm not tall, but I'm sprinting. Oh, yeah. Huh. My I mom, need to see those. My mom takes... Tons of pictures, yeah. just like I do. My parents took tons. Of, I'm an only child. That's a bonus one for you. I'm an only child. That's a big deal. It's a big deal, and I had an incredible upbringing. I, I truly had an ideal like, ideal like upbringing. But anyway, so I was a sprinter. I played bat. I was in a school where I played all the sports. You know, I played basketball. I played. Uh, I was of course a cheerleader. I was the head cheerleader. All the things. Um, and then like in high school, we were just talking about this. It's funny that you bring this up. Uh, in high school, I kind of realized that in all fairness, as a short white girl, that me being a fast sprinter wasn't really competitive on a bigger, a grander scale. And so I just kind of lost interest in the sprinting kind of stuff and the one and 200 and the, and the relay. 
and, and 200 was my favorite running event. I freaking love it. Um, and it's brutal, no matter what you run into the wind. But I started falling in love with more like distance running and just started doing, we didn't have a, a cross country team at my high school. And so yet there is one now, which I'm glad about, but I just started doing like local five and 10 Ks and, and that was a lot of fun. So yeah, I mean, literally, I've, I mean, but I was that kid in high school who woke up in the mornings and I did a Jane Fonda workout in my living room with VHS tapes. And I'm telling you that there's a lot of girls that will tell you this stuff or like, yeah, I work out four times a week. And they worked out four times in one week. And their best week. Years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And have not worked out since or work out. At, no, no. I mean, most women don't. Yeah. I also loved Tammy Lee Webb. She did uh, the buns of steel and the abs of steel and all that. She was a she was very neat. But um, so I would wake up every morning and do that, and then at night I would do ballet. Yep. I would literally get home from school. I would put on my toe shoes. I would walk around them in them if I wasn't doing ballet, if I wasn't practicing or stretching, but mainly just to keep my feet in shape. And so I would just do ballet constantly, essentially until I slept. And sometimes I would sleep in my shoes and I would try to sleep in these extreme stretch positions like uh, like the splits. I would sleep in like those kinds of positions so that I would just keep my flexibility up. And I'm still flexible. Don't you yeah, love you it? Yeah, you are. <laughs> Everybody benefits. Everyone benefits. I'm going to call an audible. We're going to change your last one. Oh, yeah. Okay. You had an idyllic yeah. childhood, and in a way, you've had a very mentally healthy adulthood. Yes, I agree. Because in our little realm, you do stuff that most girls can't talk about, can't deal with, can't explain. Yeah. And a lot of people would think it's because you're... You know, it's the opposite. A lot of girls in our little realm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of girls that kind of like get into the sex spurt thing. Yeah. Are because they come from like a stripper background or something where, you know, they're they're exploiting themselves. Yeah. For you know, in a sexual manner. Wouldn't you say it's kind of like the drug addiction counselors who are drug addiction counselors because they were drug addicts or the, the guy run alcoholic anonymous yeah. was an alcoholic. Exactly. That's correct. No one else could do that. But that's not me. No. Literally, but I mean, and I don't know. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't ever I would say that sex was on my mind even when I was a child. I remember and my parents were very affectionate towards one another, not in a kind of sexualized way. Uh, they're still together. Her dad <laughs> is the the prototypical American man. Yes. Not not like John Wayne, but more like um like a fifties businessman. Yeah. Get yeah. up every morning, same time, Absolutely. same routine. Walks into the diner. Yes. Everybody knows him. Yes. They bring his, I mean, he's the first one in, but that's who he and structure. Very straight laced. Very yeah. structured. Yeah. My mom is is a little bit more of a hippie. A little bit more of a hippie. She's super funny, but you know, I I truly had an idyllic um, upbringing. I never knew if they ever that they ever disagreed on a single thing ever because they never did it in front of me. Um, they were very healthy. We were all. It was a very healthy together relationship, family. Um, I was going somewhere with that. What were we talking about before that? Well, we were talking about how sexually you were very young oh, when yeah. you really started kind of already. Yeah, I mean, aware. it was, and I wasn't allowed to watch anything. I wasn't allowed to. I mean, I was very protected as far as what I watched, what I oh yeah ingested in any way, shape, or form from friends to music to movies to any of it. I didn't watch anything inappropriate at all, and didn't have any interest once I was old enough. It just wasn't, and yet, sex was always interesting to me it was always something that i kind of found fascinating um i remember being in the second grade and i remember i don't even know how i even had an inkling of the movie the graduate 
I never seen it. I think I'd maybe just seen a poster. But an older woman and a younger man. That's a poster. And I fantasized about that as a second grader. How which is especially funny because as soon as I actually got old enough to date, younger men were never of interest to me ever, ever, ever. But I mean, I I had I remember having a very vivid kind of imagination of my sexual future young. Fascinating. I think I think probably younger than usual. But I don't know why. And you didn't start any younger no, than anyone no, else? No, I started no. having sex when I was 15, almost 16 with, with the my classic boyfriend. With my high school sweetheart. I was the captain of, I was the the head cheerleader. He was the captain of the football and baseball teams. You know, we were together forever. I mean, yeah. And you've never really, and girls deal with shame yeah. and guilt a lot, and you've never really dealt with that. No. No. I, I haven't dealt with anything damaging or hurtful. I've always, you know, it's, it's even, even, I mean, I would say even the, the disintegration of my marriage, you know, I don't feel like it did a great deal of, of damage. Um, yeah. No, you never, I mean, I met you two years after your divorce, correct? Uh Uh-huh. And you barely spoke about it. You know what I mean? Any more than anyone else would. I don't hide it, but I also, I don't blame everything on him. No, no. I mean, you know. That's interesting. I never even thought about that. Yeah. (laughs) No, and you have a good relationship, too. Yeah. But just like with her parents... And friends and family, yeah, there's no dysfunction there. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, whenever we were home at Christmas this year, in fact, Fort Worth was like, You have the least dysfunctional family I've ever seen. Ever. <laughs> Everyone ever. gets along. No. Yeah. Everyone gets along. We had great, I had amazing grandparents. Like, there's literally no. And there's nothing, it's not one of those like weird families, like, where a lot of stuff's like swept under the rug. No, it's really or not. Or they go, yeah, cousin so and so's not here. She's having a baby, and she's like fifteen. You know. Yeah. And there, for whatever reason, there wasn't a lot of drinking either. No, we don't. There's know some. We, very little. Yeah. Very little. Yeah. yeah. It's but it's not taboo. It's just like not interesting. It's not part of it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. But again, her dad has some structure. Yes. Yeah. He he holds a, he runs a tight ship. He does. He does runs a tight ship. That's a good. That's a good little surprise one. So, what was the one that you were? Your very first job. Oh. <laughs> she always talks about wearing this little watermelon dress and being oh on the smiley gosh. team. Oh my gosh. At H E B. Oh my gosh. Okay, so H E B is a Texas-based and Texas exclusive grocery store, and my first real job was as a cashier at this grocery store. And I was very good at it, as I am at everything that I do, because that's how I am, because I want to master everything ever. And um, and Fort Worth teases me because I was the employee of the quarter several times. I was, um, they had something that they implemented under my, under my time there that uh, was called the... You call it the Smiley Team so much, now I can't remember what it was actually called. I think it was called, like, the Happy Team. But anyway, it was it was essentially like, you know, being upbeat and charismatic. And I was one of the very first members of this, this little, you know, team. Unit. We didn't actually do anything. It was just we got recognized for it. Um, but anyway, in my watermelon dress, I pretty much wore all through my junior and senior year. It was this, it was so much fabric. It's literally just, it was the most hideous thing ever. And I only have one very distant, distant picture. Was it green? No, it was pink and black and white. That's good. I mean, it was, but it was so, it was at a time when you, there was a lot of crafting and a lot of. Oh, Homemade yeah, clothing. having grown up in the 80s and 90s, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what A lot talking. of, like, homemade clothing look, and that's the look of it. It was a full length, yeah, like, enough fabric to cover, I don't know, five countries. It was, there was a lot. That's funny. It was so comfortable. <laughs> but I wore a dress, frankly, every day because I loved that watermelon dress. That's funny. 
<laughs> well, that, and this has not been our normal podcast. Oh, no, that's but a funny thing to talk about. We want you to know a little bit more about us. Yeah, that's just fun. Especially in this realm, you know, there's a lot of weird. There's a lot of weirdness. There's a lot of weirdness. We're pretty straight. I mean, even the fact that, like, we have other businesses. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. So, we <laughs> That's pretty funny that you uh, that you came up with this list. That's I funny. like that. I like that. That's a good list, baby. You Thanks. did a good job of... It's like you know me or something. I know. I know all the <laughs> idiosyncrasies. But again, it's it's an... Un, you have an unusual confluence of characters, characteristics, that allow you to talk about what you talk about, to... To be able to navigate in this very male-dominated, sure, it's all male, sure, you know, and and deal with it in a healthy manner. Well, and, and I also see it from other people's. And work. I give yeah. my dad a lot of credit for he was always very cautious that he wasn't raising a feminist. You know, any time that I kind of and I certainly went through my phases where it was kind of like a girl power kind of thing, um, but. He would be the first to point out in a pretty a pretty um, straightforward way, but a way that was open for communication. If I felt the need to say anything more about it, was you know that he had never seen, or it was very rare that you see a success, a truly successful woman of of leadership in business or in politics who had a healthy home life, and. And that that and it's really the healthy home life was more important. So he wanted me to be successful. He never discouraged me from, um, you know, doing things. But at the same time, he also encouraged me and my husband about me being being able to be a stay at home mom. Big and deal. it was amazing. It's a big deal. Yeah, it was amazing. Well, if you guys like this podcast, please hit the like button. Subscribe to our channel and share with your friends. I don't know who you would share this one with because nobody else cares. I know, they're like, who? Nobody else cares what Buddy's past is like, but it's pretty fun. I've had an amazing life. Bye!